All right, uh, let's see if we can't get that last filter. It's up here. So they kind of go in order, um, low frequency, higher, 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 higher. And um, let's, see, let's get rid of this here. Um, so um, we can, can select one of these and that's what we were doing. And this, these acted as nice bandpass filters. Um, and uh, this one here was supposed to be a high, uh, uh, a low cutoff filter let through the high frequencies and it was just seemed to be designed wrong. So um, it is this one here and uh, even the schematic shows here shows something different that was here. What was here was 110, 150, 330 and 270. It didn't make any sense at all. All right. So the 150 is correct. So I pulled that, uh, pulled these two out. All right. And I've replaced this one. I didn't have a 150. So I put in a hundred in parallel. I had a 68. So this is 168 now. Not, not ideal, but that's what I had in my junk bin. 168. And then this one here, um, I did move the 330 over. That was too big. There is some interactions between these two filters. The uh, uh, frequencies come in, they get split. One goes this way, the lows go this way, and the highs go this way. And um, so this is a low pass filter, high pass filter. And there is some interaction here at the start. Um, and so it is a bit dependent on the value of this capacitor. So I played around a bit and it seemed to be um, 200 picofarad. I didn't have a 270, but I put in two 100s in parallel. So I made a 200 here and a 168 here. All right. So let's see if that fixes it all up. So we need to measure our filters again. All right. So we are going to go between uh, 20 kilohertz and 20 megahertz. That'll be, oops, start frequency. 20 kilohertz stop frequency 20 megahertz there we go so 20 to 20 uh, we're going to turn on the tracking generator um, and uh, what we will do oh there you go see it right away i spoiled it didn't i but i want to zero it uh, let's zero zero this so we get a nice pretty picture um, I'm going to put the two, uh, the two cables together. Oh, it already looks pretty good, but we'll go ahead and, uh, and zero, zero it. There we go. And then we'll do a rough position here of, uh, oops, of 90 there at the top. All right. So we'll come down here and we could display four things. So let's make a pretty picture. We'll display a low thing here. Oops. You can do it. All right, there's that one. So we will do a trace of you. And now, uh, now we'll go on to the uh, B trace. We'll move it to the next frequency band. And there it is, looks pretty. And we will lock that one down. Let's go to the next one. We'll go to C. And there's our next one. It's got a little bit of a wow. That's the interaction between those two filters. We will uh, keep that one and then we will go to the high one. Remember the high one had that really steep little sharp little bit on it. And then uh, it had a big whoop de doo out here and everything. So let's not turn that one on. There we go. That looks beautiful, doesn't it? So that's, uh, that's, really, what, that's really what we want here. Uh, it comes really sharp up and then over. There's a bit of rolling off at the corner and stuff. That's, and that's the interaction between these two. Um, this little peak here and this little bump downwards here, those play off one another in the, uh, in the design here. It's kind of hard to separate those two because there's no buffer in place. There's no buffer that, uh, so they get to see each other electronically. 
Um, but yeah, so this is much, much better than, much, much better than it was. So let's, uh, let's start turning these guys off. Blank, 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 oops, blank. And there you go. It's, uh, uh, it's looking really, really good. It does have this one little stair step here. And I think that's, again, this interaction between this filter and this filter, instead of it coming just quite straight down, there's a little bit of interaction there, but, uh, this is a whole lot better than it, than it used to be. Um, it used to look like, I know a trick here to kind of make it look like it used to make look like, uh, yeah, it used to kind of look like, it used to kind of look like this. And now it looks like that. So much, much better. Anyway, so I think it's pretty much usable now. Um, like I said before, I didn't come up with enough wire. So if you're going to buy one of these kits, um, you might have to find some wire. And uh, otherwise, it's just winding toroids. Everything else is done for you. It does not match the schematic, so remember that. They, they, they do point to the schematic when you buy the thing, but yeah, it doesn't, it isn't, it isn't, the part values aren't, aren't the same here. But let's kind of look at the schematic before we end this series here. Okay, well, let's look at this first section here. The input comes in and there's a high pass filter and a low pass filter. So high pass filters have to let through high things. And so capacitors can let through high things. And then low things will get passed by the inductors and they'll be shunted to ground. So high passes get to, uh, high frequencies get to go through, low frequencies go down to ground. They get thrown away. If you look at a low pass filter, it's just the opposite. The inductors let through the low frequencies, but then the high frequencies get shunted to ground. All right. So they're basically the exact same uh, geometry, right? It's a capacitor, inductor, capacitor, inductor, capacitor, inductor, capacitor. And this is inductor, capacitor, inductor, capacitor, inductor, capacitor, inductor. So they're just the opposite. You swap inductors for capacitors and you go between high pass and low pass. Um, and then this low pass here comes to here. And again, it goes between a low pass and a high pass. So whatever made it through the first one then gets split again. Highs go this away and lows go this away. And again, it's uh, uh, the two types, of, two types of filters there. And then these high frequency ones come in here and they go into this first section. And 6.8 megahertz highs go this way. And 4.5 megahertz lows go this way. And then they get split again. Uh, this one gets split again. So the lows go this way and the highs go this way. So it's just a whole bunch of highs and lows. And um, this schematic shows a little bit of a, uh, a trap here. So there's uh, in, in this particular uh, implementation of the filter, they had some frequencies that was causing them troubles. And so they put in a resonant circuit here right at 30 megahertz. Maybe it was a Air Force station or some type of military station at 30 megahertz or something. And that just got shunted to ground. So they just put a big notch filter in here right at the end. So they, they killed that. But that's not on our, on our board. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, there is somebody's name on, on, on this, uh, C. Turner. KA7OEI. So, yeah, I don't know if he was working, I think, at one of those uh, uh, software defined radio stations and designed this filter for their use. Um, it's pretty straightforward. If you ever want to build something like this, just go to that uh, um, design program. Just, just type in Google and say uh, uh, RF filter design calculator, and then you, there'll be a bunch of them, and you can type type in the values, and it'll tell you, oh yeah, here's the layout. You know, blah, blah. you can say, I want seventh order, ninth order, I want three order, whatever. You can just type it in, and then it'll just tell you what all the things are and what the values are, and people just don't have to do much these days. They just type it in, and it tells it what to do.